If you've seen either of my other Maverick reviews, you'll know that at first I wasn't a big fan of this new small truck. After that first review, though, I became a fan. And now, two years later and three different drives, I'm still really impressed with this little truck. It is available in three trims, the same three trims you've had since launch. Those include the XL, XLT, and Lariat. Now, I've driven the XLT trimmer package and the Lariat before. So the only one I haven't driven is the base XL. In the last time I drove a Lariat, it was a 2022, while this is a 2023 model. Each trim offers both engine options, and I have driven this with all the different engine options, which we'll get into later. But first, let's check out the exterior. So I think the best looking version I've driven so far was the XLT with the trimmer package. The extra graphics you get, beefier tires, and a bit taller stance really do a lot for this truck. This one here, our Lariat, is offered in Atlas Blue, which is a new color for the 2023 model year. Our truck is also packaged with the Black Appearance Package, which features 18-inch unique machine-faced ebony aluminum wheels, Black Edition Ford logos on the front and back, plus black door handles, grille, mirrors, seats, interior accents, headlamps and tail lamps. And I definitely think that's a good appearance package to put on the truck. This dark blue helps accent that really well. A black truck with all the black accents would look really good as well. And of course that black appearance package is a 2023 only feature. But just jumping back into it, we do have the LED headlamps with LED signature accent lighting and the incandescent tail lamps. You can see the Maverick nameplate stamped into the tailgate and then of course the hybrid badge there on the passenger side of that tailgate. And looking at this size of the truck, this is a small truck. It has a wheelbase of 121.1 inches, a full length of 199.7 inches, a width of 72.6 inches, and a height of 68.7 inches. And our ground clearance here is 8.3 inches. This is the front wheel drive model. If you get the all wheel drive, it's 8.6 inches. And then the trimmer package ups that to 9.4 inches. All right, with that, let's take a look at the tailgate in the bed. This is a locking tailgate. So if you have the truck locked, it will lock this no soft drop or power drop in this thing there's no integrated step like you get in an f-150 there's not much extra that you get here it's a pretty basic bed and is the same with all of the trim levels of the uh, maverick we do have the spray and bed liner you do get a little cubby over here that you can store stuff and of course this is going to be the biggest gripe from truck people is that the bed is too small to haul a lot of stuff but this isn't a truck that you buy to haul a lot of stuff. You can still fit quite a bit in here. Obviously, I've seen people put bikes in there. Pretty sure I've seen people fit a four-wheeler in here. And your max payload is 1,500 pounds, so you can fit a lot of weight. And then, of course, Ford has the flex bed system that they kind of coined with the Maverick, where you can add accessories and do different things to make it a more flexible uh, option but there's a ton of videos out on that we're not going to dive any deeper into the bed let's go pop the hood and check out the engine that powers this little truck All right, and as I alluded to earlier, there are two different engine options that can be equipped on any of the trim levels. So just because we have the premium trim level doesn't mean we have the premium engine. As a matter of fact, we don't. This is the standard engine that comes with the Maverick. It is a 2.5 liter hybrid inline four cylinder engine. It pushes a full 191 horsepower and 155 pound feet of torque and is matched up to a CVT. Now the more premium engine, which we did have on the XLT 
trimmer that we drove is a 2.0 liter EcoBoost engine. Also an inline four, but this one is turbocharged, hence the EcoBoost. This one pushes 250 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque, and is matched up to an eight-speed automatic transmission. And I'll tell you what I think about the difference in the two engines, which one I liked better as we drive it. It's also worth noting that this thing can tow up to 2,000 pounds, and if you have the four-wheel drive with the trailering package, it can tow up to 4,000 pounds. And I've actually seen one of these things going down a road pulling a trailer that I thought was way too big for it, but it seemed to be doing just fine. I personally haven't towed with a Maverick, but again, I've seen it done. So let's move inside, start talking about the interior and the tech that's in this thing, then we'll take it for a drive and we'll talk about what I think about this engine in this truck. All right, guys, so we're in the Maverick now. We're going to go ahead and skip out on the back seats. Uh, I did jump in it in one of my other reviews, and they're tight. There's no getting around it. It's a small truck. They're smaller and tighter than even some of the compact hatchbacks that I've been in, which isn't great, but uh, they worked out fine. We did drive this thing with to the kids in the back seats. It works out okay, but I wouldn't buy it uh, if you're constantly hauling around a lot of people. That being said, the seating materials, both in the back and the front, are pretty nice. This is the Lariat. It has the black onyx uh, interior. These are Active X trimmed seats, which is just a faux leather. And all the materials are decent with a uh, blackish grayish sometimes even bluish tint to them and of course you get some weird geometric shapes to break up some of the uh flat surfaces it's not great material you can see this is already scratched up here and that's never coming out uh they're again cheaper plastics but none of it like rattles or creaks at least so far in this truck. It's all been pretty good, and I wouldn't want much more out of the truck than what it has here. It is push button start, so let's go ahead and kick it on. You get the Ford welcoming sounds, and you can see our eight inch center stack touchscreen with Ford's sync system, and it's a decent enough system that you have you do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but it's exactly what you would probably expect from any kind of Ford. You've got your audio controls below that with your hazard button there, your AC and heat controls, your start stop button again way down here. You do have a switch down here for your back window. So this does have the optioned out back power sliding window. You've got USB type A and USB type C charging ports. You've got some nice cubbies down here, including this uh, stand-up cubby that's great for having your phone in there obviously cup holders our gear shifter which is just a little rotary dial here put it into reverse we do have a nice backup camera electronic parking brake this button switches your drive modes so you do have a normal mode tow haul mode slippery mode an eco mode and a sport mode and back to normal and then you do get another couple cubbies behind this. You got your armrest, nice and squishy. Good size cubby there. You have a leather wrapped steering wheel, nice controls on the steering wheel, everything that you would expect. No flat bottom, sporty steering wheel, no paddle shifters, doesn't need it. All your lighting controls over here two stocks which is a little bit rare for a ford truck and then your driver information display you got some analog gauges and a 6.5 inch lcd for your driver information display and again it's all pretty nice really good interior i can't say that uh, i would buy the lariat just for this interior the xlt that we drove with the uh, trimmer package had a good interior as well. This does have an eight-way power adjustable seat where the XLT had a uh, manual adjusting seat. Of course, the passenger seat is still manual adjusting, but this driver's seat is power, which is a nice uh, feature. But yeah, that's a quick rundown of the interior. Again, if there's something that I missed that you wanted to see, you might check out one of my other Maverick reviews. I probably touched on it in one of those. 
But this one I'm excited to get to the driving portion and then we'll wrap it up with the price and some of my final thoughts. Let's get into it. All right, let's get this thing out on the road. It is a hybrid vehicle, so it's pretty quiet on takeoff. Of course, that engine does kick in. It's not a plug-in hybrid. And that's one thing that I don't really get about this truck is I don't understand why they didn't release an electric version of it. This hybrid is really great. A plug-in hybrid would be cool. An electric version would be really nice. Now I know that uh, EV vehicles aren't selling all that well. The Lightning isn't selling as well as they would hoped, but it's a super expensive truck. It's a big truck that not everybody is gonna want. This seems like kind of a better starting place for an electric vehicle. Just kind of my personal thought on that. But if you are looking for a fuel economy, this one, the setup that we have here is the best that you can get. So the 2.5 liter hybrid engine, front wheel drive has an EPA rating of 37 miles per gallon city 42 highway and 33 combined we've been actually averaging 40 to 41 miles per gallon during our full week with this truck it's a little bit lower now because we've had it idling and things like that as we're uh, doing the video but that 40 to 41 miles per gallon is a serious number and uh, I think that's great. And I haven't really been doing much highway driving with this thing. So it's been mostly city, suburb, and rural driving, which again, I just think that's a really fantastic number. I'm at three quarters of a tank and that's after a full week of driving this thing and not filling it up. Now, of course, like I said, the back seats are pretty tight for the kids. So if we're driving with the whole family, uh, we are taking the family vehicle and not this vehicle, so. I haven't constantly been driving it, but I drive it just as much as pretty much any other vehicle that I review. And that's never the case of still having three quarters of a tank after a full week. Now, one of the things that's a constant and uh, something that I've talked about in the other Maverick reviews is the drive. This is a rougher drive than you might expect. It is, uh, truck on the cheaper side and it is a truck so you get a lot of the uh, not very good engine noises as you saw as we we're checking out the engine there's no covering on it there's no sound deadening on it and a lot of that is the same with the rest of the truck but even just the suspension itself is a little bit bouncy but if you're buying a truck and expecting a truck kind of drive it drives pretty good if you're buying it and expecting to get crossover quality driving it doesn't really deliver that it's definitely rougher than uh, most crossovers of the size but definitely not a deal breaker for me the power out of the 2.5 is plenty i think for this truck it might suffer a bit from the cvt but quite frankly just going around town running errands things like that in a truck I don't think it really suffers too much. I did enjoy the Tremor that I drove that had the uh, two liter EcoBoost with the eight speed auto. I enjoyed that a bit more. Definitely a lot more punchy. Felt almost more like driving a uh, souped up hatchback, which is a weird combination with a small truck. You can go back and check out that video again if you're interested in seeing more about that. But I don't think this thing needs that. This is definitely just enough engine for this truck. And the fact that you get such good gas mileage is fantastic. I'd almost opt for an even simpler engine if it could get the price down a lot more, but that's not the case at this point. Of course, you do have the drive modes that we talked about. You have normal, tow haul, slippery, eco, which I haven't been driving it in eco, which if I was, would probably net even better fuel economy. And then you have the sport, which again, I haven't really driven it in the sport mode during the whole week. I've left it in normal driving mode and it's done just fine. But immediately as you turn it into sport, it's a bit more peppy. The engine's a lot more loud. Again, it doesn't sound good. But if you need the peppiness out of this thing, that sport mode helps throw it into a couple of tight corners. And there's some body roll, but it's not terrible. Again, not any different than most crossovers because it's based on a crossover platform. 
brakes are really good. There is a little bit of lag, but decent power. Almost 200 horsepower out of this truck. It's not super heavy. It's plenty for what a truck needs to do. And if you're racing around in this little thing, you're just doing it wrong. And putting it back into normal, there's a little bit more uh, deadening of the throttle, a little bit more lag, but it still picks up. Another thing new for the 2023 model is the Ford Copilot 360 is available in more trims. And this is just gonna give you some sensors. We've got that backup camera. You have cruise control, but it's not radar guided cruise control. It's not lane keeping assist, but you do have some safety features thrown in there, which is perfectly fine. So while personally, I do like the uh, two liter EcoBoost engine with the eight speed automatic transmission, more as a driving experience. I think this one is completely adequate and definitely perfect for an entry level. I even think with the hybrid system as the entry level is probably even too much. You could have just went with a basic engine in here, basic automatic transmission, and uh, it would have been cheaper and just as good. With that, let's go ahead and get back to a parking spot. Let's talk about the price of this truck, and then I'll give you some of my final thoughts on its competition, on what I would buy, and what my final verdict is. Let's, let's get into it. All right, before I give any of my final thoughts on the truck, let me go through some of the pricing really quick. Starting off with the base XL Maverick, that'll start you at 23,815, so 24 grand for a base truck. That sounds pretty good. But as you move into the XLT trim, that starts at $26,000, still pretty good. Of course, the XLT with the trimmer package that we drove and reviewed was $33,995, so almost $34,000. The Lariat with the front wheel drive and the base engine starts off at $27,995, so $28,000. But this one with just a few options added to it has a full MSRP of just over $32,000. And I think when the Maverick starts getting over the $30,000 mark, that's where uh, I might start drawing the line. But let's go ahead and jump out and I'll give you some of my final thoughts. All right, so out of all of the Mavericks that I've driven so far, my favorite one that I drove was the XLT with the Tremor package, also with the two liter EcoBoost engine and that uh, automatic transmission, not the CVT. It was a better driving experience. I liked the way it looked a little bit better a little bit more beefy, but it was still upwards of $34,000, which is pretty high. Maybe getting the XLT with a premium engine and doing some of your own beefiness to it would make more sense if you could get into an XLT around 30 grand, or maybe just sticking with the most base and then uh, adding your own stuff on top of that. This is definitely a truck that you wanna get into as cheaply as possible, in my opinion. I don't know if it's worth spending almost 40 grand on a Maverick. And all of that being said, I would consider a Maverick as a purchase in the future. If I was personally buying a vehicle, I do like the size of the truck. I've grown to like the looks of the truck a little bit more. Interior space could be an issue, but quite frankly, uh, not a huge one. Again, I would go for probably about the cheapest option you can get and then try to build it up myself if I wanted to do that. I'm also a huge fan of the Hyundai Santa Cruz. I've done plenty of videos on that one as well. I like the way that it drives and I like the looks even more than I like this. And it is a bit bigger than the Maverick. But outside of that, there's not a ton that actually really competes with this. But if you are interested in it, it definitely gets my thumbs up and approval definitely worth checking out. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Maverick, about this Lariat. If you're into automotive reviews, especially trucks, we do a lot of them here on this channel. We do a different review every week, so subscribe if you're into that. You should also go check out txgarage.com for more written reviews as well as event news coverage over there by a lot of great authors, not just myself. Definitely worth checking out. Subscribe to the newsletter if you want just weekly updates. But with that for this video, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching.